The late president of Tanzania, John Magufuli, may now have been buried, but as much as he was in life, he continues to be present in most Tanzanians' lives as they reflect on his complex legacy. Many would say that he left behind a nation divided in its memory of a leader who was both revered and loathed by some. Tanzania's High Commissioner to South Africa, retired Major General Gardens Salim Milanzi, spoke to us remembering Magufuli as a man who did so much for his country and particularly the poor. I would imagine that uh, Tanzania is still in mourning at this time. Yes, indeed, uh, it is still in mourning. Uh, you know, most of the Tanzanians received uh, this sad news uh, with the shock uh, of the unexpected death of um, of uh, beloved President uh, John Pombe uh, Magufuli. And this was announced, um, the death announced was done by the, the vice president at that time, and who was actually on the tour of the region. And um, yes, we we are still in mourning. We are 21 days and uh, we still have seven more days uh, to go. We definitely miss him. Um, many Tanzanians will miss him. And as you can see, this has been evidenced by uh, the way he was seen off, the way he was seen off by many people almost everywhere that uh, um, he has been, uh, 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 the body was sent, I think in Zanzibar, uh, Dar es Salaam, um, Dodoma, where we also had the leaders from the region, and they paid uh, really a glowing tribute uh, to uh, to our beloved uh, president. So yes, we are still in mourning, yeah, and we we'll definitely uh, miss him. Um, yes, but now we are looking um, forward. Now it's this time uh, people now have to agree uh, to uh, that is no more. And we are looking forward now to a new era. We now have the new president, uh, we have the new vice president, and the country now is also looking uh, uh, forward. Your Excellency, at this time, people spend quite a bit of time looking at uh, his legacy and thinking about what he contributed, what he left behind. What would you say is uh, President uh, Magafuli's uh, legacy? I think one of the legacy which is uh, generally accepted here uh, is the question of um, accountability. You know, the, there's been a lot of complaints before him uh, that um, there's, there was lack of accountability among the public servants. And um, uh, but actually, when we when he came, uh, that's one thing that he tried to ad address with his very f uh, famous slogan of uh, Hapakazi too, which insisted on actually more on accountability and uh, 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 work. But also the, that sense of pride. You know, uh, if there's one thing that he had succeeded and uh, uh, him, and uh, which is also left among many people, is uh, that sense of pride of being Tanzanian, you see, or being an African. Um, and he was not apologetic about uh, about being African uh, or Tanzanian. And he has instilled that one uh, among the most of the Tanzanians. And I'm sure that one will still be there for many um, for many uh, for a long time uh, to come. But also also in the question of faith, you know, he was uh, he believed in God, a God fearing uh, person. Uh, this is one thing, and, and actually this one also brought uh, a lot of um, uh, religious tolerance. You know, before that there was a lot of um, misunderstanding between different religions, but now that one is no longer there. It's possible now to see, for instance, people of different religions uh, sharing the same uh, platform. That was not uh, before. But also uh, the whole question of love for the poor. If there was one thing that he did was actually uh, his love for the for the poor, he always stood for the for the oppressed people, and of course that has also been um, uh, the the cornerstone of even the the, uh, the domestic Tanzania domestic uh, policy over the years. You you always stand for the uh, for the oppressed, and uh, he continued uh, doing that. 
but also the whole question of a smooth transition. Uh, over the years, Tanzania has actually enjoyed a very smooth transition between one, um, uh, one leadership to another. And uh, you can actually see how even now there has been a very smooth transition after his death uh, to the current president, Her Excellency uh, Mama Samia uh, Sulu uh, Hassan. I think in a nutshell, those are the issues. Of course, there is also the issue of confidence. Yeah? Uh, you know, it, it really injected that sense of confidence that, you uh, know, um, we should feel that uh, we are not poor, you know. We have so many resources. If it's well managed, we can do it. So I think this, in a nutshell, these are the issues I'm sure they, they, they will still, they are their big legacy uh, to from uh, the late uh, uh, president. A lot of the things that you described talk about um, uh, the way people think, believe, attitudes, feelings. I just wonder if uh, the life of the ordinary Tanzanian was improved practically. So what physical things do you think that you can point to to say he did this and people's lives were better as a result? I think the, the number of uh, uh, things that... Uh, Ordinary Tanzanian, because I talked about the poor, ordinary Tanzanians would actually uh, point out and feel that, yes, I think uh, the late President Magufuli uh, did uh, uh, for them. One is actually on the economic uh, economic uh, advancement. You know, he is one of uh, the, the president who had um, most of his policies were people-centered, and you can actually see there's been a lot of improvement and, um, uh, in the lives of people. You go to the village now, the access to water is, is, is actually improved, uh, is very well improved. Electricity, you see. Uh, in the past, you know, you go to the village, you find there is no um, electricity. And actually, people would, feel, would want to go to town because in the, there was so much disparity between uh, between uh, between villages and, uh, and, uh, and 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 the towns that that has really touched the, the lives of many so i'm talking of his program about rural electrification water healthy there are more than 1000 um, 800 health centers which has been built uh, during uh, during this time. These are the issues uh, where ordinary people, and especially even uh, ordinary people would very much remember him because most of his, uh, um, most of his program actually aimed at the uh, uh, ordinary people. Some would say that his leadership was autocratic and heavy handed at times. What do you say to people who accuse him of uh, being uh, almost like a dictator? No, I don't, I don't think he was autocratic or even uh, heavy handed. Um, and um, as you have said, some of these could be the, those activists. And if you have an activist who also has the um, the ambition for political uh, power, I think I can see that's the kind of uh, language that he would say. But uh, let me say he was not um, autocratic. Of course, he had a, a style of leadership and which was actually admired by many people, especially Tanzanians. Um, of course, a, a little bit uh, forceful, especially um, if he feels that is good and it's for the benefit uh, of the people. Uh, yes, you could have some of those people who are not uh, non-performing uh, people, uh, uh, the business, who thought business would be as usual, must have a lot of hard time, but he was not uh, really uh, autocratic. And as I said, he's someone who always stood for the poor. And uh, I'm sure those, he did not like people who oppressed the people, I mean the poor, those kind of people always say that he was uh, autocratic, but I can assure you he was not autocratic. Of course, he had a little bit, uh, he had uh, a style of leadership, which is a little bit in a positive way, uh, forceful, 
when he feels that uh, he's doing it for the good of the people, but not autocratic, not even uh, heavy and handedness as some people would want to, uh, to portray. Human rights uh, groups say that people were abducted and some even killed uh, during his time. Um, again, what explanation can you offer to this? Because again, these aren't opposition leaders saying this, these are human rights groups. Um, let me say the, the human record, the security in general, during his tenure uh, was, was very excellent, it was very good. Um, people remember that uh, before he came to power, there are a lot of uh, what you'd call uh, security issues or human rights issues. I mean, things like uh, armed robbery, things like hijacking of buses, daylight uh, raid of the banks uh, were a common place. And uh, even the, the uh, the former president before uh, him, uh, President Kikwete, has been dealing with this uh, uh, problem. You know, there was a time people used to live in fear. You see, buses you were not uh, traveling at night, even. Um, so, uh, and in some, there, there are some places where it was actually uh, even groups of people who were terrorizing, uh, uh, terrorizing, terrorizing uh, people. So it was only after he came uh, that all oh, these are things of the past. We no longer see, we see buses now plying at night. It was not that time, uh, it was not that uh, before. Uh, we don't see much of those armed uh, robbery, those places where there were some of the elements of terrorist activities where people were killing each other, that was also very well addressed by, uh, by him. So it's, it's, it's not really, uh, and these are the real human rights issues, security rights issues, and he did that. But of course, you can, uh, despite all these notable uh, achievement, there could be some isolated uh, cases of one or two, I think, um, armed um, robbery or abduction. But these are isolated cases of which are being dealt by the, the, the police, and these are common in anywhere. But to those which were rampant bef uh, as before, I think those were very well addressed by, uh, by the late uh, uh, president. So it's not really, and in anything, there's nothing that can be attributed directly uh, to him that he was maybe responsible for ordering something, you see. And, and these are common issues, I think, in any, in any place where these isolated cases, yeah. Things that can be attributed to him directly was uh, the way he dealt with the media, because he did curtail uh, some of the media activities and try to restrict them. What was he trying to achieve with that? Um, I don't know the when you talk about curtailing the the media, um, because we see we see in Tanzania. Um, there is both independent and the state-owned uh, media. Uh, they are there, all of them, you see, and um, all of them are free to report the newspapers, um, uh, radio stations, independent and those which are sto uh, state-owned. We actually even have blogs and uh, online uh, forum. They are not blocked. And they will be surprised by the type of news that one finds in these blogs, you see. There is a lot, you see, and uh, if you read some of the blogs on Tanzania or oh, written here, you'll be surprised and uh, agree that uh, maybe the country, uh, the, the government has been very uh, tolerant, you see. There has been a lot of abuse and misuse, uh, misuse of these platforms and uh, actually not even seen anywhere. So, uh, Freedom, yes, there was a freedom, but freedom sometimes not to the extent of causing division to others or even causing uh, chaos, you see. And uh, there is some type or even some of the programs. Some of the programs are closely uh, monitored. Uh, they have to be in line with their African culture, uh, religious culture. But to say that they've been uh, curtailed, and you can actually see even during election, during the election, there was a lot of... Um, um, uh, campaign, campaign. People were, were were very free to to campaign. 
So it's, uh, I don't see that much uh, freedom. And uh, let's not see only on newspapers. Let's even go to those blogs, uh, uh, online platforms. You see how free actually people uh, are in airing their, their, their views. The other accusation was that uh, under him, democracy came under attack, uh, that the opposition parties and activists uh, uh, were treated uh, again with a heavy hand, uh, harassed, um, political gatherings sometimes banned uh, when it wasn't election season. Um, what do you say to that? No, I, I would say the... No, there's been a lot of uh, discussion on democracy. I know we, we actually mean the, uh, the Western democracy, but it, uh, let me say one of the basic tenets of uh, democracy is election. Uh, and um, in Tanzania, regular elections have been, uh, have been conducted. Regular election during, uh, and this is enshrined uh, in the constitution. And all the political parties, all the political parties have, uh, have, have, have attended. And uh, the, 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 the late president has actually been in the forefront to make sure that the elections are held. And uh, even the last election, if we really want, didn't want democracy, he would have stopped that election on the, prefect, on the pretext, say, of COVID. There are a lot of people who were saying, no, we shouldn't hold uh, we shouldn't have election because of uh, COVID, but he was the one who was actually in the forefront to make sure that, no, this election, because it's, it's a democratic right of every citizen uh, to, take, to make sure that they do participate and uh, it will take place. And then that it took place and we saw most people actually coming um, others from outside, actually. And the electoral process was properly formed. Uh, voters' education was carried out, uh, voters' registration campaign, and the peaceful voting. So, uh, and uh, even the smooth transition. So I don't really agree that uh, was uh, during his time, uh, democracy was much under attack because we could have actually seen that one during election, of which he really wanted the election to take place. In choosing um, Samir Hassan uh, Sulu as his vice president, I guess he saw a woman who could be president if he wasn't there. She has now ascended to uh, that post. Why do you think that this was a person that he thought uh, could lead the country one day? No, um, because she's really a very capable uh, lady. Uh, you know, she was uh, his uh, uh, running mate as the vice president during the uh, during the first phase, and then now the second phase. And at once, she really uh, he admitted himself. She, she said, uh, "Actually, she's a very hardworking uh, lady, and uh, who has performed well as the vice uh, president uh, during the first phase." So um, she chose someone who could really. Um, uh, she's she was she's a, a presidential material and one who can actually take over after uh, he is led. So, like most of Tanzanians, they are very confident and they have very high expectations uh, that during her presidency, uh, no doubt the country will be propelled uh, to even uh, greater greater heights uh, during the as uh, uh, president. So yes. He chose very much believing in her that uh, she would at one time become the, the, uh, the president. And that's what the constitution actually says. Whoever the vice president is likely also uh, to take over uh, at times like what we they, we they experienced. Yeah. You've painted a very glowing picture of the late president. Um, and I just wonder, if maybe you can admit that uh, as far as COVID-19 was concerned, he perhaps could have done better because uh, he was leaving a lot in the hands of God. Uh, some would even call him a denialist. 
And now we see uh, what's being described as the most uh, mutated version of uh, COVID-19 in your country. Could this be one of the things that uh, may be a blemish on his legacy? No, I think one, one is the, the issue of uh, the mutative uh, the, 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 the mutative uh, version, as, as you call that one, I think is, is not, I'm not sure whether that is a proven case one. And um, I don't know what uh, President Magufuli could have done because one is, uh, it's not that he left everything in God. What he said uh, was this depending on, uh, in addition to everything that will be done, you should also not leave God aside. And that's what he and that's and that's what he did. And in fact, in the first place, during the first time, what he, he said, he said, okay, we, only that he was not for lockdown. And um, but the rest, I think we have followed all the other non-pharmaceutical kind of measures. We, we are followed until that first time, um, until at a stage where uh, we felt, we thought that was over. Like in most other countries, most other countries actually thought uh, that first wave, when it passed, we thought that was over. And uh, just like the country, we thought we were already out of the wood. But, uh, well, we are now talking of a uh, second wave. And, uh, and in fact, what he did during um, when the second wave came, he also encouraged people, yes, to follow what the uh, the, the uh, health uh, healthy sectors are, 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 are saying about uh, taking care of the um, of the, 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 the protecting them, the, themselves. So um, I'm sure it is time. And you know, we are, we are passing at the time when there's still a lot of unknown in in the COVID. And it's not only in Tanzania, but I think throughout the world, there's still a lot of unknown about this one. We are, we are not sure. No one is really sure. And no one can claim a victory at, at this time. So like Tanzania, I think we still, we still had the, uh, the first time, which we thought we are over. We thought we were succeeded. And then we came the second wave. But him, I think he continued insisting that, no, we should take precautions. But we should also be. Um, we should try to take precautions as much as as possible. But also not forgetting uh, God and the other other traditional uh, therapies, of which actually worked during the first time. Okay, and perhaps in conclusion, um, what would you say? Um, a final thought, a final memory uh, that sticks out for you that perhaps defines him as a man. Um, I mean, what, what it defines him as a man and uh, which most people would really uh, remember him. Um, he was a good fear, fearing uh, person, um, deeply religious, God fearing, uh, who never missed his churches, uh, wherever uh, he was. And uh, surely beneath what uh, people saw his very stern uh, face. He was actually a very humble, a very humble person with a very good sense of humor. Uh, most people would remember whenever during his uh, speeches, it used to, lay, to leave people uh, in, in uh, stitches. He loved his sports. He was a family man with his seven uh, children. And uh, because of his humble beginning, um, a very down-to-earth man, uh, he identified himself very much to the uh, with the poor, and I think this is trying to identify himself much with the poor. Uh, that really is because of uh, uh, his uh, uh, beginning, and he is someone who stood very fearlessly uh, with whatever uh, he believed, and uh, he has left us very good lessons, uh, I think, in terms of uh, uh, the pride as an African, uh, the Tanzanian as an African, um, religious tolerance, uh, resilience, uh, never to give up, and uh, always to stay focused with what you want, you would, uh, would want to achieve. 
Yeah. So this is really uh, what I would define him uh, in, in, in a nutshell. So that's uh, Tanzania's High Commissioner to South Africa, Ambassador Milanzi. Uh, High Commissioner Milanzi, remembering uh, the late President John Magufuli.